All right, folks, this is a story time. Yes, story time about the time I went to Portugal, traveled to Spain by myself, and almost got kidnapped. It was fucking terrifying. So I had been asked by my yoga teacher if I would like to accompany her to do an Envision Yoga teacher training, which I was already certified uh, in that specific training. Plus, I believe at that point I had already had my 200 hour and my first 300 hour. Yes, I have a 200, a 300, and another 300 along with many other yoga certifications. Anyway, moving on. So we go there, everything's great. And the hotel, the yoga studio, everything was super, super duper close. And it was really cute and pleasant. Um, but every single day, I would look across the river and I would see Spain. There's our bikes. Right over there is the studio, the yoga studio. And then just take a little walk with me. And guess where the hotel is? Bum ba da ba! Right there. See? Up in there, above the window with the light on, is my little balcony. Super close, right? And then down there, you can't really see it, but the little blue light that's shining down there, that's where the river is. Every day and every evening, I would sit on the beach in Portugal and I would look across the river to see Spain, the beautiful lights. It was just so beautiful, like things I would see in a magazine. So on the last day in Portugal, I decided to get my ass on a ferry and travel to Spain by myself. I was so excited to be traveling, especially outside of the country. I'd never really been outside of the country, not like this before anyway. I set my room up as if I were at home. It was all mine. It was so wonderful. The hotel was just amazing. It was peaceful, relaxing, and it had just a really great atmosphere. But go figure. I had to buy cleaning supplies anyway while I was there, because <laughs> that's just me. Portugal was great. I felt completely safe traveling by myself while I was there. But most of the time, I spent the days with my wonderful yoga sisters. They were my family for the whole week. They were so wonderful. These girls truly are amazing. Wait till you see the last picture. It kind of predicts what was going to happen to me in Spain, even though we were just joking around. Here it is. The studio owner has a vehicle that has a cage in the back, specifically for animals. We were only fooling around. But anyway, the last day, I finally decided to get on the ferry and go see Spain, the site that I had been looking at and admiring for an entire week. Well, hello, shores of Spain. How are you? Before I left for Spain, I checked in with all of my yoga sisters to see if anybody would like to join me. And the majority of them had already been to Spain, so they weren't really that interested. And since my time in Portugal had been so lovely... I decided that I would go by myself. I didn't feel like I was unsafe or anything. So I went, I started checking out the shops, looking at things, but I forgot one very important factor, that it was siesta time, which means all of the shops are closing down. So the majority of this town was shutting completely down. Nothing was going on, and there really wasn't many people anywhere, except in one part of town. And I think that's where the majority of people might have met up during siesta. I'm not really 100% sure. So anyway, I'm walking around, taking pictures of things, obviously looking like a tourist, blonde hair and dreadlocks in Spain. So, okay, 
As I'm taking pictures, this guy with two small children walks up to me. And he speaks Spanish. And since I took eight years of Spanish, I start trying to have a conversation with him. Yes, this part of town. I mean, hello. Looking back on it, I'm like, OMG. What was I thinking? Like, girl, run. So, of course, because this guy has two small kids with him, I wasn't threatened, right? And... I'm trying to have a conversation in Spanish, but, you know, I really was kind of taken off guard, so didn't really, didn't really know how to communicate very well. Um, and he had said something about, like, smoking a cigarette or whatever, and he had, like, a pre-rolled cigarette, and I don't know if it was weed or whatever, but I was already smoking a cigarette, so... I was like, no, I'm good, thanks anyway. And then he said something about, like, going and watching a movie. And that's when I started to get kind of freaked out. And I said, no, I have to meet my friends in a few minutes. Uh, so as we're rounding the bend in that one really creepy part of town, uh, he gets to a car. He puts his, the kids in the car and motions for me to get in. That's when I said, no, I have to meet my friends. So I turn around and I start walking away. And I didn't want to run because, <laughs> you know, so I start walking kind of fast. But um, I can hear him now start walking behind me. Yeah. So I take out my phone and I'm pretending like I'm talking to somebody and I'm naming off buildings of where I'm passing by as I'm walking so that he can hear me and so that he thinks I'm telling my friends that like where I am so that they can meet me. He catches up with me and kind of cuts me off and gets in front of me and like still tries to tell me to go with him. And I'm like, no. So at this point, there was a person standing in a doorway. Thank God. Uh, so I say, no. I hurry up. I walk away. I turn down an alleyway. Luckily, I ran into somebody who speaks English. And I said, what is the fastest way to get back to the ferry? She tells me, okay, I fucking run my ass off to get to the fucking ferry station. And of course, well, guess what? It's fucking siesta. Oh, my God. So nobody is around. And at first, I couldn't even find the, the fucking ticket booth, okay? Because I'm in a panic, right? I am like, oh, my God, this guy's trying to fucking kidnap me. So as I'm, like, searching this huge parking lot looking for the ferry ticket booth, this old couple uh, comes riding on their bicycles. I say, excuse me, please stop, please stop. And as they stop, I hear a car pulling up behind me. Now, in order for this guy to get there that fast by vehicle, he must have fucking been driving extremely fast. So anyway, I say to them, I'm like, please, please, please don't leave me. And then I asked them, is there a man in that car with two small children? And the gentleman said, yes. Why don't you want to go with him? And I said, because I don't know him. Please don't leave me. And at this point now, I'm fucking hysterical, crying, because I knew that he followed me there. And it's siesta time. He knows this, so he knows that there's not going to be anybody around, right? So he could just fucking snag me, right? So they walk me to the ferry place. Of course, nobody's there, so I have to wait inside, right? The whole building, the waiting booth area, is completely made of glass. Where am I going to hide in there? He could drive by and just see me. So I have to hide crouched down behind a fucking chair until the ticket teller gets back from break. And then when she gets back, I'm trying to communicate with her what's going on. And because I'm so frazzled, I forgot how to fucking speak Spanish. Yeah. Well, thank God for Google, though. 
911 is not 911 in other countries. I didn't even try to dial it because I knew that wasn't the case. And yeah, mm -hmm. terrifying, fucking terrifying. When this guy made contact originally, he motioned for me, like, to follow him. And because I was taking pictures of, like, the church and, you know, all of the beautiful artwork, really, on the buildings, I assumed that he was being like, hey, you know, follow me real quick. I want to, I'll show you something else that's cool that you can take pictures of. That's what I thought. Well, uh, obviously I was very fucking wrong, but yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> like obviously these people will use children to help coax you in, right? Because obviously, if it's just a single dude, that's going to be more of a red flag than if it's a guy with two small children, one little girl and one little boy. And I'm guessing the kids were probably between the ages of like five and eight, maybe. And I tried to conversate with the little girl a little bit, but... She was pretty quiet, and it was kind of hard for me to understand. So I don't actually think that he was even from Spain. I think that he was from someplace else um, and spoke some Spanish because typically, even though I may not be able to speak Spanish fluently, when I hear it, and when I read it, I'm able to understand it pretty quickly, but I had a pretty hard time understanding things that this guy was saying. So I don't even think that he was actually from Spain. I don't think that he was Spanish. Uh, yeah. Um, honestly, this was probably, uh, uh, actually, hands down, <laughs> the most terrified that I've ever been in my life, I mean, I'm in another country, okay, by myself, and I don't know how to contact anybody, and almost nobody is around. Yeah, dude, I was fucking scared. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't, I'm not really scared that easily. Kind of takes quite a bit to fucking scare me. Uh, but yeah, I was terrified. <laughs> Hands down, I ain't gonna lie. Like, yeah, I was crying. Yeah, really just wanted to go home. So, hopefully, anybody might learn from my mistakes and either don't travel alone or if you are going to travel alone, make sure you know how to contact 911 in another country and make sure that you can speak some of the language at least so that you can ask for help or make sure you have Google Maps handy, make sure you have fucking cell phone service. Like, yeah. I literally, I thought that I had thought of every single thing that I could possibly need before I left. I had months to plan. I planned it like I fucking planned. But I didn't plan for that. So, hopefully, y'all will uh, learn from my mistakes. Mm -hmm. Stay safe out there and trust your fucking gut. Mm -hmm. In worst case scenario, scream as loud as you can.